All right, we're going to look at Taylor series, and in order to, in order to introduce them, I want to provide a little bit of motivation for exactly what they are. What we're going to try to, try to do is take any of our favorite functions, like e to the x, and write them as a power series. Okay, now I've chosen to write e to the x as a power series centered about zero. How do I know it's centered about zero? Because it's not, say, x minus four squared over here, or x plus two squared. It's essentially x minus zero squared, x minus zero cubed. So I know it's centered about zero. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit of a, a little advantage of algebra and ca um, some calculus in order to find these values of a sub m. The first thing we should know is, is that if x is equal to zero, a1 at times x, a2 times x squared, a3 times x cubed, all of those terms will be zero. Well, if all of those terms are zero, then a sub zero is going to be the value of e to the zeroth, which we know is equal to one. So we now know what the very first term would look like if we wrote e to the x as a power series. So we'll just go ahead and fill that in. Next, we want to grab a hold of another constant, and we're going to go for the next one in line, a sub one. Well, in order to do that, it's going to be difficult to pick out a particular x value um, just using our ordinary function. But notice that if we differentiate this, a sub zero will go away and we'll end up with a1 plus 2a2x and so on. We're allowed to differentiate power series term by term. Well now, if we let x be equal to zero, all of these terms will go away. The 2a2x, the 3a, uh, 3x squared and so on, all of those will become zero. And so a sub one will be equal to e to the zero. We can continue this. Let's find, oh, there's what it looks like when we plug that number in. Let's find the second derivative. If I find the second derivative, that takes a two, two a two x, it will become two times a two, three a three x squared will become three times two a three x, and every other term will have a factor of x in it as well. And we keep playing this game. Let x be equal to zero, <clears throat> your second derivative is going to be e to the zeroth, which means that 2a sub 2 is going to equal 1. Notice that, that we have this extra factor of 2 this time. So in order to find a2, we divide both sides by 2, and we get a sub 2 is equal to 1 half. Now we could continue this game. Notice that the next one, if we took the derivative again, we'd end up with 3 times 2 times a3, period plus then everything else would have an x in it and so forth. And so we could use this technique to build up uh, the power series for e to the x. Well, we're not really doing anything special with e to the x. This would work for pretty much any function. If we want to find uh, its power series centered about zero, okay, so we'll introduce it using uh, or doing it centered about zero, and then generalize to what it would look like if we center it about some other value of a. So let's just pretend that f of x is some represented, there's some representation for f of x as a power series. It looks like this. We saw that as we took more and more derivatives, each, we would lose one term every time. If I take the nth derivative, remember that's what this notation means, that's the nth derivative. Every single term before a sub n x to the nth is going to go away. a sub 2x squared after the third derivative will be zero. a sub 1x will be zero when we take the second derivative. But a sub n x to the n will be equal to, um, its derivative will be equal to n factorial a sub n all of my x's are gone, and the term after that will still have an x in it. Okay, so just for shorthand, I wrote x times g of x to indicate that every other term in the power series for the nth derivative of our function will have an x in it. Well now, if I let x be equal to zero, doesn't matter what g of x is, x times g of x is going to be equal to zero, and we end up with n factorial being equal to or n factorial a sub n being equal to the nth derivative. Now remember, we said evaluated at zero. So the nth derivative evaluated at zero is n factorial a sub n, which means if I want to know what a sub n is, I'm going to divide both sides by n factorial. And so this is what the Taylor series is going to be. Now I'm going to state it for a general 
center A. Okay, so this is with center A. Uh, we just state a little bit about the radius of convergence here, but this is our power series representation for f of x. I changed a's to c's here. Um, then, turns out, our coefficient is just as we derived it, f, the nth derivative of f at not 0 anymore, but at a. Now why would I switch to a? Because if I let x be equal to a in my power series, we'll get a minus a to the nth, which will eliminate all of the terms like it, uh, we did when we let x be equal to 0 up here. So now I'm going to make a Taylor series out of it. Um, I remember our Taylor series, we said c sub n is equal to all this, so I just substituted that in. And that will be how we generate these power series. Okay, so let's go back to e to the x. We want to center it at a. We've already done pretty much all the work. The great thing about e to the x is that it's derivative and its higher derivatives are all equal to e to the x. So if I want to find the nth derivative at 0, just plug 0 in for x, we get 1. Which means, when I use the formula for the Taylor series that I had on the previous page, it's the nth derivative evaluated at our center divided by n factorial times x to the nth. Well, every single one of these guys is going to be equal to 1. So it's 1 over n factorial x to the nth or x to the n over n factorial, which, if we write it out, is 1 when n is equal to 0, plus x when n is equal to 1, plus x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial, and so forth. Now, one of the things we'll really be interested in here is what is our radius of convergence? Well, by the ratio test, if we take ra the ratio of consecutive terms, so the n plus first term is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial, the nth term is x to the n divided by n factorial, but we divide by the nth term, which is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. When I simplify, notice we have an n plus 1 factorial in the denominator and an n factorial in the numerator. We've seen that a lot. What ends up happening is we peel off one factor of uh, n plus 1 factorial. We'll get n plus 1 times n factorial, which reduces to just n plus 1 in the denominator and then the absolute value of x will remain from um, reducing x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. So since our limit is equal to 0, as n goes to infinity, this goes to 0, we have an infinite radius of convergence, which means this converges for all values of x, which is really cool because then we can do crazy things like let x be equal to negative 1, and it turns out that e to the negative 1 is 1 minus 1 plus 1, hat, 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial, and so forth. And the further out we go, if we only do partial sums, we'll get better and better um, estimate, estimates for e to the negative 1. So e to the x is one of the, our favorites. We need to know that formula. Another one of our favorites is the sine of x. Okay, so um, we want to do the Taylor series centered at a equals 0. Well, our function at 0 is the sine of 0, which is 0. And now we need to take the nth, continue to take derivatives, evaluate them at zero, and um, get those values. So the derivative is the cosine. Derivative of the cosine at zero is uh, one. Now we take the second derivative, that's the derivative of the cosine of x, which is the opposite of the sine of x. At zero, we're going to get the opposite of the sine of zero, which is just simply zero. Okay. The third derivative, we take the derivative of the opposite of the sine of x, we get the opposite of the cosine. Evaluating the cosine at 0, we get 1 for the cosine of 0, but it's the opposite of that, so we're going to get negative 1. Now I should continue, but I really don't need to because the fourth derivative will be the sine of x again, which means we'll have 0 for the fourth derivative, and then the fifth derivative will be 1, and the sixth derivative will be 0, and then negative 1, and loop back through this. Okay, So we're starting to see a pattern here. Remember that this is what our Taylor series polynomial is going to look like, or our Taylor series um, expansion is going to look like. I just wrote it out term by term rather than as a sum. f of 0 is 0, f double prime of 0 is 0, the fourth derivative at 0 is 0, so we only end up with the odd terms. The first term, f prime of 0 was 1, and then when we get to the third derivative, that was negative 1, 
and we divide by 3 factorial, and then we multiply by x cubed. Ah, there should be an x squared in here. Oh, I have to add that in here. What did I write? Oh, it's not going to, oh, there we go. x squared belongs in here, and x cubed. There we go. Okay, so the third derivative at 0 times x cubed, well, that's going to be 1 over 3 factorial x cubed. When we get to the fifth derivative, we're back at the positive 1. The seventh derivative, we're at negative 1, and so forth. So that's what the sign looks like. One more. What if we want to find the Taylor series for a function centered at some other value, like let's say a equals negative 1? We need to find derivatives here. Okay, so the original function evaluated at negative 1 is negative 1 over, uh, or 1 over negative 1 squared, which just reduces to 1. The derivative, well, that's x to the negative 2, so we bring the negative 2 down, decrease the power by 1, f prime of negative 1 is negative 2 divided by negative 1 cubed, which is just positive 2, because negative 1 cubed is negative 1. The second derivative, oh, uh, here we go. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. x to the negative fourth, negative one, f, of, f double prime at negative 1 is 6, and we continue. The third derivative is negative 24 x to the negative fifth, which, when evaluated at negative 1, is positive 24. Um, and in general, I start to see a pattern here. Notice these numbers, 1, 2, 6, 24. We need to start recognizing those as uh, factorials. We have one factorial, two factorial when we had the first derivative, three factorial at the second derivative, four factorial at the third derivative. So in general, at the nth derivative, we're going to end up with n plus one factorial. We throw everything into our formula. We want to evaluate our nth derivative at negative one, which we've done. We've got a formula for that. This numerator is n plus one factorial. We divide that by n factorial. And then, instead of having x to the n, we have x minus negative 1, x minus our center to the nth. Well, that reduces to, or simplifies to, x plus 1. And over here, we had n plus 1 factorial. When we divide that by n factorial, it reduces, and we just end up with n plus 1. 